Hello folks and welcome to Paddock Pass, your pre-race edition for the 2018 German Grand Prix and we are back at Hockenheim. Love this place. Um, I was talking to some people this morning and it's, it's, it's just nice to come back to a proper old school track. You know, nothing against the new circuits, it's just you come back to somewhere like this, it's got so much history and you feel it from the moment that you walk in through the paddock gates, actually from the moment that you drive in in the morning. Um, yeah, it's just very special coming back to somewhere that has so much history. Uh, Steve? cameraman say hi Steve hi Steve uh, and I and Jason and everybody we did a little walk around the old track this morning total fever whether you agree or not that it provided good racing uh, amazing place to be and just to walk through the forests and you know see nature kind of reclaim the track it's um, it's quite haunting uh, very nice anyway let's stop being so wistful shall we Steve and get on to the interviews Mercedes in the news today a nice little tweet this morning of a contract about to be signed but who was it Valtteri Lewis maybe somebody else of course it was Lewis two more years reportedly now the highest paid British sportsman in the world um, and yeah two more years 2019 2020 to take him through to the end of the current commercial agreement in Formula One same as Seb at Ferrari same as Max at Red Bull Lewis Hamilton will be a Mercedes driver for the next two seasons it's a really exciting time for me um, it has been the whole the whole process um, even though it's really obviously uh, drawn out through my fault, really. Um, but I've been with Mercedes since I was 13. I actually signed, I'm pretty sure I signed in like 1997, um, but it's dip disputable. But, um, but I'm pretty sure it was 1997 when I got a phone, when I came home from school and Ron Dennis had called and said Mercedes and McLaren wanted to be a part of supporting me. So it's a huge... It's been a huge journey, a, a really long journey, and a real special journey. And I remember I have so many great memories from the whole trip, the the whole experience of the past drivers, and and just growing up seeing the sport. And it's just I'm really really proud to be a part of this family, and particularly of what it's grown to be, um, and to be a part of that. Uh, and there's no better. Honestly, I just love. I went to the factory. Um, it wasn't yesterday, the day before. I just love being there. The energy, the atmosphere knowing how hard everyone's working to help us all achieve our, our primary obje objective is, is a great feeling and it's exciting. Now, following the British Grand Prix, that guy's not leading the championship, this guy is. Vettel back on top of the standings, Ferrari on top of the constructors' standings as well to the tune of 20 points. There's a thought process going through the sport at the moment and it has been said, it's been stated by Toto Wolff that Ferrari now not only has the best car in the sport, potentially also the best engine. Does Seb agree with those feelings though as he arrives here at the German Grand Prix, his home race, but on a track which in Formula One, he's never been victorious? I have won, but before Formula <laughs> One, so it's a long time ago. Uh, so uh, I heard that a shame, uh, it would be a shame to lose the race here and uh, we might not come back for some time, so better get going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you guys in the ascendancy now? Certainly Mercedes feel you've made such a step forward both car and engine wise. Yeah, I mean obviously our engine is the same as it has been races ago, but I think overall we have made progress. I think the team is still growing and still improving. We have a car with great potential, so you know that speaks for for the, the package, but we need to deliver, you know, we need to get the job done and the, the opportunities that you have, you need to use them and that's what we try. Uh, it's tight, it's tight at the top, it's very tight with Mercedes, uh, here and there with Red Bull, they seem to be a bit more track dependent than Mercedes and, our, and us. So we'll see, I think the last races, uh, they were a little bit ahead, Mercedes. In Silverstone we were a match, which was a great result for us and a great success since uh, it's been so difficult the recent years. Um, so, yeah, I don't know, we we'll see with the weather this weekend and so on being so hot uh, where we are going to be with the tyres as well, so, but, yeah, I, what I want to say is I don't really have expectations, but of course we expect in a way to do well, but I, I can't give you numbers. And this fight between you and Lewis that's been raging for so long, he's now confirmed for another two years, you're at Ferrari until the end of 2020 as well, looking forward to I that. I was first to <laughs> confirm until 2020, so... Hopefully we'll be first until 2020, so uh, no, I think obviously Lewis is one of the greatest drivers um, the sport has had for since he entered and uh, that, that time, so it's where he is, you know, is where the front is and 
that's where we want to be as well. So it would be great to uh, keep fighting with, with him, with Mercedes, um, but to come out on top. So, with Seb confirmed at Ferrari for two years, Lewis confirmed at Mercedes for two years, and Max, obviously, still, uh, as he has been for a while, confirmed at Red Bull for the next two years with a Daniel Ricciardo. Will he be staying with the Red Bull family? Will he be moving on? Has he made his mind up yet? Well, he's had a week to think about it. We have, of course, just come off the back of a triple header. Last week was the first time, really, for a lot of us to actually have a little bit of time and space to gather our thoughts and get it together. Has Daniel got further clarity on what he wants to do? Indeed, are his options starting to limit as he looks to his future? Uh, had a bit of time off and, um, yeah, just to, I think, in a way, I felt like we needed it regardless, but uh, just to kind of get away from F1 for a little bit, a few days, and. Uh, just on the beach and with, with some friends actually from Perth who are, who are traveling Europe at the moment. So it was nice just to be around some, some of my mates, you know, from back home as well and just get some, uh, I guess, a bit of perspective and, and a few things, just simple things um, that life has. Uh, maybe perspective on where you might be racing? Yeah. I, who for? Yeah, it's, it's certainly, um, I mean, it's obviously occupying a, a bit of my mind and, and the closer now it gets to a time where a deal needs to be done. Um, yeah, I'm certainly putting some thought into it, and there's a lot. There's a lot of uh, I think pros and cons with a lot of situations. So, yeah, just just figuring that out, um, and uh, I think that that helped as well, getting away from F1 for a few days and having kind of my time to dissect everything. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I still honestly don't have uh, have the answer in my mind, but um, narrowing things down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and just quickly back to work this weekend, um, yeah. Germany back on the calendar. Is it somewhere you enjoy? Are you looking forward to the weekend? Yeah, yeah, das ist, uh, das ist sehr gut. All looking rosy for Daniel Ricciardo at the moment, if I'm honest, as we've been discussing for pretty much this whole season. I think he stays with Red Bull. I don't think he goes anywhere. Which means there's nowhere for either of the Toro Rosso drivers to go either. Uh, Pierre Gasly having a great season. Brendan Hartley, is he having a good season or a bad season? It's a difficult question to answer. On the face of it, he's having a bit of a shocker, and yet there are mitigating circumstances that make it look slightly better uh, than the initial impression might be. Great guy, rapid guy, very experienced head uh, on his shoulders. How much is that helping him in what is proving to be not just a tumultuous, but also a quite a, a, a mentally demanding season? Do you feel this season's kind of getting away from you, or is it just that bad luck seems to really like you this year? Yeah, especially the last two months, it, it does feel like that. It's been a bit frustrating, and uh, you know, weekends that I've been been strong or been on top of the teammate, you know, I've had had an issue, or you know, we haven't had the pace to get in the top ten. So, yeah, I, it's it's been a rough few races, but I haven't let it down my confidence, and I feel like I'm in a good place mentally, and. Uh, just need everything to come together. Um, hoping this. Is, I've been saying it every time. Yeah, this will be the weekend. I click the reset button, but it's, it's no different. I mean, the last races, uh, some of the things that happened were completely out of my control. So, um, from that point of view, I'll, I'll uh, keep approaching it the same way. Keep learning as much as I can from weekend to weekend, and, and try and maximise everything. Yeah. How much does age and experience impact that? Because we've seen many a Toro Rosso driver crumble under the pressure, massive expectation that's put on you guys, but you're not a typical Toro Rosso driver. If you don't mind me saying you're... Old look, Yeah, well, not, you know, not old, older, shall we say. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think I showed that in, in uh, Canada when there was there's all these rumours around, and uh, it's fair to say I was under a lot of pressure, and although the, the race ended on lap one, you know, I think I showed that the pressure wouldn't get the better of me. And, and actually, I feel a lot stronger after, let's say, some tough times. Um, you know, it's made me rethink my approach a little bit, maybe a bit, be a bit more selfish where I need to be. And yeah, it's, it's, it's made me change a little bit and, and actually feel stronger um, mentally, which is a strange thing to say, but in, in the end, it's true. So. Honda obviously have brought some big upgrades already this season. Comments out of Red Bull that, you know, they want them to bring more in the second half of the year. Do you, f do you feel or do you fear uh, Toro Rosso will be used as a, as a guinea pig essentially for Red Bull Racing next season? Um, short answer is no. Um, if, if Honda keep bringing updates, that's great. <laughs> um, obviously the question mark is always reliability, but, but I know that the reliability is, is very high on the priority list 
uh, for all the engine manufacturers when you're only allowed um, you know, two of some components, three of others in, in, in one season. Um, obviously, we have a few in the pool now. We've, we've done st some strategic um, engine changes, but generally speaking, um, I think the reliability has been quite good, and uh, I think it's uh, it's only a positive thing to have Red Bull now on board for next year, and hopefully we keep the momentum and, and keep making progress. So, talking about demanding seasons, Williams just doesn't get any easier for them, does it? Uh, Silverstone had the rear wing issue. Now, Williams have had this issue before. Essentially, what happens is they engage DRS, the rear wing slot opens, but then when they close it again, that downforce doesn't reattach itself to the car, so they've still got no downforce at the rear. So when they get into the braking zone, it goes on them. Uh, we saw it happen to Massa numerous times. I think the first time was China, maybe three, four seasons ago. It happened in Mexico to them as well. Last weekend at Silverstone, it reappeared again for both Lance Stroll and for Sergei Sorokin. Um, Sergei, good head on his shoulders, smart lad, engineering student, talks us through it, talks us through exactly what's happening on the car and what hopes they have, or otherwise, for the weekend in Germany. The, the, the issues were as soon as you open the DRS which was never coming back, even when you close it. Uh, so yeah, sorry to just have no, no, a no, question. that's fine, that's fine. Because that's been a perennial problem for Williams over the years, that with the closing of the DRS, when the flaps closed back, getting that reattached, yeah. getting the downforce reattached to the yeah. rear has, has happened quite often. I mean, I don't know about, you know, the past years. Mm. I mean, that was an issue in, um, in Silverstone, but it was it was basically starting much earlier yeah. before you actually hit the bottom closing the DRS. Uh, and no, yeah, we, we found the, some some obvious reasons why. It was not something to do particularly with the wing or with the floor or with whatever. It was a combination of few factors together which was creating such a, you know, su such a stall. Uh, so yeah, I mean, now we're, we're over it, so we're not worried about that anymore. So you'll be using the new wing this weekend? Uh, no, we won't, just because this wing is, uh, let's say, for the specific of this track, this uh, it, it's not related to the issue we had. We would not, we would not be using it anyway. So. And so to Force India, not the season they were hoping for. A big battle on for fourth place. And for Sergio Perez, not the season he was hoping for. I wouldn't have thought either. Um, consistently of recent, of late anyway, uh, I would say being slightly outperformed by Esteban Ocon. Is Sergio's head fully at Force India? It's around this time, of course, we're getting into silly season. Drivers like to think about where they might go into the future. Sergio's name is one that is being rumoured heavily with a move to Haas. And we know that he has been in regular contact over the years with Renault as well. And Cyril Abitbull in the week just gone has said they are having to make uh, plans just in case Daniel doesn't stay at Red Bull. Red Bull come calling for Carlos, meaning that they're going to need another driver. Could Checo be knocking next door? Could he be knocking two doors down uh, at Haas? Or is he going to stay here? It's a really complicated issue for him. It's a team with which he's built up so much trust and love over the years. But... Would the lure of either one of those two be too strong to keep him at the team that looks like it's going to struggle to hold on to that fourth place? Well, at the moment, it's always obviously the the time of the year where everyone is is looking to see what. I don't have a contract for next year, so um, always want to see what alternatives are out there, and, and and we'll see. I'm I've been really loyal to the team in the in the last. Uh, I've been with the team for five years. They've been extremely loyal to me. Um, it's more a like uh, a family thing, you know, we're really close together and um, there have been bad times, good times, uh, but yeah, there, there is a point where we have to make up uh, a good decision. I, I, I've i always said, you know, I, I had some offers in the past and I always decide to stay because I, I, I see good progress and, and good future in the team. If you were underperforming, they'd get rid of you. So if the team's underperforming, would you be as ruthless? As you say, it's your family, but they didn't come up to the expectations that you wanted as a racing driver. Yeah, it's not. It's not only that. It's it's, it's just like with the with the driver. If you're underperforming, they know your talent and they know what you are able to do. There, there are reasons why you are underperforming, and it's the same with the team. You know, uh, there are reasons why we are underperforming at the moment, and I can see them. Um, and uh, and that's why I believe that if things 
fall in place as they should do. Obviously, there are no guarantees it will happen, but if they fall in place as they should do, then there should be a good potential in the car. So, Checo, I, I got to say, I really liked his final answer there about how. Because <laughs> I tried to make that analogy. If you were a driver and you weren't coming up to, you know, to giving the goods, you'd be let go by a team. So surely, if the team's not giving you the goods, then you'd consider letting them go as well. And as he said, if I'm not giving my all, or if I'm not getting the most out of me, then the team would know why that is. Similar for him, he knows why the team isn't able to give him everything at the moment. Yeah. Uh, still, the talk about the financial issues surrounding the team and we brought it up in that as well the team within the last week has said it's going to cost them a million dollars to make the new chassis for next year something that they don't need uh, and that they weren't expecting to have to spend the money on um, are the financial woes at force india as bad as have been reported again only time will tell but it's not the simple situation that i think many people look at it as being that force india will simply re-sign checo and esteban and everything will roll into next year exactly as it is and perfectly i haven't said we don't even know who the second driver at Mercedes is going to be next year. We expect it to be Valtteri, but could they pull Esteban Ocon out of, uh, out of uh, Force India and, and bring him back into the fold for next year? Um, some people think Ocon might end up back here at Renault. I think that's fanciful. He was only ever with Renault through the Genie uh, driver program, not really Renault Renault. So anyway, I'm digressing again. Nico Hülkenberg's home race this weekend, Renault driver, had a superb race uh, at Silverstone, started on the medium tyres and with uh, a lot of other people starting on the softs, I think everyone expected him to run a, a long first stint and then finish the race on the soft. As it happened, everybody that started on the soft ended up two stopping. He started on the medium, then moved to the hard, one stopped, great result. Um, so yeah, on the back of that, coming here to his home race, bit of a catch up with Nico Hülkenberg. Home disadvantage? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a disadvantage? No, nah, it's, 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 it's not. I think it's quite neutral to be honest, although I know this place quite well, but uh, you know, come Saturday, come Sunday, I think all of us guys, we know the track you know, uh, similarly well, but um, yeah, it's just come here with a good feeling, I have good memories from here, I've raced many times successfully, uh, Hockenheim has pretty much always been kind to me and therefore I you know, look forward to be here this weekend. And off a great result at Silverstone, strategy looked like a really hard one to pull off, yet you did it. How much confidence does that give you, uh, you know, that no matter the tyre strategy, you can still get a good result? Of course I did it. I mean. That was clear, wasn't it? But this weekend is a, <laughs> it's a different weekend, so we have to see how things pan out here this weekend. It's obviously uh, tomorrow it looks very hot, uh, Sunday maybe not quite so much. So every weekend is different, you know, and you just have to yeah, adjust around the, the circumstances, around the different, you know, tracks, type of tracks. Um, I hope, obviously, that we're going to be competitive. We have a good upgrade here um, in, 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 the, in the baggage, so um, hopefully we can, can have a good, strong weekend here. Getting into silly season, no one can see you leaving runner, but who do you want as your teammate? You want to apply maybe? I like I'm you. not good enough, man. I think you would be not giving me much headaches. So literally I'd none. Very much like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, does that imply Carlos is giving you headaches? A little bit sometimes, he's fast, yeah. <laughs> Happy with him staying as your teammate? I am, I think you know we're a good, um, good team. I like working with him, we're pushing each other extremely hard and uh, I think we're working pretty well for the team as well um, and uh, yeah I, I had you know, no concerns or headaches with him staying on it actually very much like that. So we've covered Force India, we've covered Renault but of course the other team in that really intense battle for fourth place in the championship is Haas. Now the guy who's brought home the majority of their points so far this season is Kevin Magnus and Romain Grosjean really going through the rigours of it this year. He pulled it all back together again though in Austria. Phenomenal race that saw he and Kevin both come home in the points and show I think what could have been from day one but also pull them right into that battle for fourth place. We think great, Romain's got his head together again, all good to go for the rest of the year. Then we get to Silverstone, crashes in practice, biffs into his teammate at the start and then has a wobble going side by side with Carlos Sainz. Uh, in the race and takes them both out. It's like he's gone from that back down to that again. And all the time, team bosses have told us they are getting knocks on their door continually from people up and down this paddock for a seat that's looking slightly sketchy. Uh, what does Roman have to do to get his head back in the game? And is he even thinking about his future next year fully in the knowledge that there are wolves at the door? Well, I think, uh, you know, it's uh, it's the job of Formula One. There's only 20 seats in the world and everyone 
obviously want a good seat and Haas is doing an amazing job and, and potentially can finish fourth in the Constructor Championship so there's only three teams in front that you want to be so I'm happy for the team uh, saying that you know I think uh, we've had a, a long history together and uh, we want to keep working together uh, just need to to get back to uh, what we were doing before uh, that long series. Not easy times for Roman Grosjean at the moment, especially when your teammate is putting on such a racing masterclass. Anyway, on to McLaren. Fernando Alonso comes here to this weekend. Uh, once again, fully in the media spotlight. Uh, what are his thoughts coming into the German Grand Prix when I think it's fair to say if you look at McLaren's race pace, it's not bad. Everything seemingly hinges on that Saturday, getting that all together for both he and Stoffel in order to maximise the whole weekend. Yeah, I think uh, on the weekends we repeat always the same kind of performance. Okay, on Sundays we can run uh, as competitive as, as the uh, as the midfield uh, leaders, but uh, on Saturday it seems that we struggle a little bit more. Uh, so qualifying will be a, a key. You know, uh, it's true that we have three. DRS zones uh, this weekend and uh, maybe overtaking is not impossible but uh, you know if you start a little bit um, uh, in the front part of the midfield it, it helps on everything you know the first lap performance the start the risk you take so uh, qualifying will be the, the main priority. Now we started this episode off talking about a world champion who had just re-signed with his team for another couple of years question everybody has in this paddock right now and it is providing the majority of the column inches is what happens to this team's young charge the majority of people here see as a potential future world champion in terms of that second and thus far unsigned red seat next to Sebastian Vettel at Ferrari except today said Charles shouldn't worry about rushing himself into that seat and there's certainly a, a vibe in this paddock that he shouldn't he has no need to <laughs> Just talking about you. <laughs> Are you going to rush to Ferrari? What? Ah, we've already asked you this. We've already done the interview today. Yeah, I'm did. so sorry. Are you getting sick of being asked about it yet? Uh, not this type of question, really. It's nuts, though, right? What? Yeah, it is. It's got to feel a bit crazy. What? It's got to feel a bit crazy. Like everyone's talking about it already. Yeah, definitely. But for now, it's not realistic, as I was saying. But uh, yeah, I'll try to do the job here first. You've completely thrown me. That was, <laughs> I'll get back to it. Thanks, man. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yes, him, interview, now. Lewis has been announced at Mercedes, meaning one Mercedes seat is gone, probably the second as well. Red Bull's pretty much stacked up. Do you know where you're going to be driving next year yet? No, uh, I'm, uh, I'm extremely sorry to not bring anything new yet. Uh, I hope uh, that I will be soon, but uh, no, for now I have no news. Is it difficult to keep focus on the job at hand when so much is being written about you? It is a little bit, but I don't know if it's natural or whatever, but uh, once I am at the track and that I need to focus on the job, it comes quite naturally for me to focus fully on, on the job I have to do and to uh, extract off my head uh, anything that, uh, yeah, that are rumours or talks. Do you read any of it away from the track? I do. <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's the, the best thing that you've seen or the thing that surprised you the most? Ah, I don't know. Um, I th it's always nice to see Ferrari and Leclerc in the same article, um, and that will never change. But on the other hand, for now, there has been no talks, so uh, but it's always good to read an article like this. So that is your lot from Paddock Pass here in Hockenheim. Looking forward to a great weekend. Now, we've discussed uh, qualifying and things this weekend. There is a chance that this beautiful weather breaks on Saturday afternoon with thunderstorms forecast for uh, qualifying. Now, I've said it, it probably won't happen and it will probably hit exactly as qualifying ends, thus not having any effect at all. Uh, set to be a stinker though, boiling hot on Sunday. So yeah, can't wait for that. Really looking forward to it. Uh, as we said, Lewis Hamilton, uh, the big headline coming into this weekend with his new contract. Um, by sheer chance, the uh, letter to my former self with Lewis went up uh, today, actually on uh, f1.com on the app and on the YouTube page. So if you haven't seen it, do please give that a look. Uh, the guys at F1 work massively hard on that, I know, and it's phenomenal if I do say so um, but yeah do go and give that a look anyway Lewis isn't leading the world championship Sebastian Vettel is will he increase his lead this weekend on home turf in Germany apparently we've got a sellout crowd for the weekend I can't wait for it all to start at this glorious track that we love so much uh, that's your lot there from Paddock Pass and we will see you later <laughs>